Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music. I want to talk about how you can play a song called Something in the Water by Carrie Underwood. And there's this cool little intro, like if you wanted to kind of follow those notes, you could play fifth fret on the high E and kind of do a pull off the third fret. So I'm kind of playing the fifth fret on the high E and then just letting my finger fall off the string. And then you could play the third fret on the B string right after that. And then we go back to three on the high E. And then we kind of almost do that lick again, kind of five, three, three, three. And then we do that lick one more time. If you want to kind of follow those notes, you have 5, 3, 3, 3, 5, 3, 3, 3, 5, 3, 3, 3, 5, 3, 3, 3, 5, 3, 3, 3, 5, 3, 3, 3, 5, 3, 3, 3, A, G, D, G, A, D, G, D, G, A, D, G, D, G, kind of an idea. And if you wanted to, you could back that up with some bass notes by adding in third fret on the A string. And I'm kind of working this as a bar idea to try and cover the third fret on the high E, third fret on the B, and the third fret on the A and actually the low E at the same time. So this is kind of tricky, but if you want to kind of follow those notes, you could throw in an A string third fret with that first fifth fret on the high E. And then go to a third fret on the low E string, same lick. And I'm doing that hybrid picking, so I'm using my pick for my bass and kind of my fingers for the notes of the lick. But you could try this just finger style too, or even throw in extra basses. Or you could use some chords by starting on a C major chord. I normally do this first finger on the B first fret, second finger on the D second, and third finger on the A string third. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, oh, the beautiful sounds of C major. Now around C's in general though, you may want to think about lifting the first finger and making that a C major seven. Or you could add in the pinky on the B string third fret for a C major nine. I mean, you could kind of say some stuff around C. Or another way to play C major nine, First finger on the D second, second finger on the A third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. Kind of using that for your C major. And then from the C, we can go into a G major chord. You normally do this first finger on the A second, second finger on the low E third, third finger on the high E third. And if you strum all those together, ah, the beautiful sounds that you do. Now you may also want to think about putting third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. Kind of working that for your G major. And we basically be alternating between those two pairs. A lot of spots through the tune where it almost feels like just kind of an eight down count on each chord. C two three four five six seven eight G. I'm adding a little bit of right hand muting to that just to make that a little bit uh, sneaky. <laughs> so if you kind of dig on that, you may want to try it that way. Or one of my favorite strum patterns for a four four like this is down down up up down up. So we took the C and just tried that a lot. You have down. Actually work at a very slow pace, just kind of that C major, G major, C major, G major. Or if you really quick at that pattern, you could kind of get two to fit in up for each chord, so kind of a times two idea. So you have C. especially for the chorus, is more of a 16th note strum pattern feel. And what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot to the beat, right now we're dividing that beat into two parts with our down, down, up, up, down, up. One, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a 16th note is, is where you divide that into four parts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And one of my favorite 16th note strum patterns is a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. And what I mean by that is if you take the C and do it down for four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you'd be doing on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you do it down on one, down on three, up on four. So you're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. through the intro and you have the C 
into our main verse. And our main verse starts on the C major chord. And then from the C we'd be going to a D major. And normally you do this first finger on the G second, second finger on the high E second, and third finger on the B string third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, ah, the beautiful sound of D major. Now you may also be going to lift off the second finger. Always a fun finger to lift. It's a D sus too. Or you could add in the pinky on the high E third for D suspended and kind of say some stuff around the D chord. Or randomly, an another D that, that I like digging on sometimes kind of works off of the C shape. Like you could take your C major shape, and then if you take that shape and just slide it over two frets, it's something I call D add four. So now I have first finger on the B third, second finger on the D fourth, third finger on the eighth, fifth fret. You may want to strum just the A string or the high E string, but you may kind of dig on working that shape for the D. And you could work any of those strumming options we were talking about. You could kind of work your down idea. arpeggios of, of the chords where you could go third fret on the B, second on the G, fourth fret, third finger on the D, fifth fret, and that's a little G major chord. And you, what you may want to do is just kind of play the D and the G and the B string. And you end up doing that five times. So kind of D, G, B, two times, three times, four times, five times. And then from there you could go to like a little piece of a B minor chord. On a first finger on the B, third fret still. But then second finger goes to the D fourth, third finger goes to the G fourth. And you could kind of work that same idea on that little piece of the D minor. And then from there we could go to second fret on the D and kind of work that with the open G and open B. It's kind of a little E minor idea. And I was kind of digging on kind of adding in the first finger on the B first fret and kind of getting a little C chord idea doing the D, G, B five times. So especially that first time through, you may want to kind of follow those notes, kind of that G major arpeggio. Time this with, with, with the downs actually that would be another option too. Kind of G2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So quick with downs, that'd, that'd be a cool option too. And then randomly on the B minor chord, actually, we're, we're kind of working that little arpeggio. But another option for, for B minor, actually, maybe we should talk about B minor first. Um, normally, you do B minor is the second fret bar, second finger on the B, third fret, third finger on the D, fourth fret, and the pinky on the G, fourth fret. You strum all those together. Oh, that sounds a D minor chord and it sounds so sad. Um, now you may also dig on lifting off the third finger, making that a D minor seven. Or another way to play B minor seven would be doing first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the high E second fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, it's another way you can play a B minor seven. Or a drone voicing for B minor that's very cool is first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second. Third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. Might be a cool option. Or you might want to dig on lifting off the pinky and making that a B minor 11. Which can be a very cool voice in use too. Or especially that first time through, the main thing there is actually the low E string on the second fret. F sharp note comes out as a bass note around that lick. So what you may want to do is actually kind of think about it, and this is a little weird, because there's only one note difference between a D and a B minor. So sometimes D major can work as a substitute for your B minor chord. And what you could do is take the D major chord and 
take your thumb and kind of cover that low E string F sharp note. That's something called D slash F sharp or D with an F sharp in the bass. Or another option that would be very cool if you want to follow that bass note is to do first finger on the low E second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. And kind of work that is kind of a D sus slash F sharp. And that way you only have to make kind of a couple finger moves between the G to the D slash F sharp. And then from there we go into an E minor chord. Normally you do that first finger on the A second, second finger on the D second, and if you strum all those together, that sounds an E minor chord. That sounds really sad. Now you may also dig on adding in third finger on the B third, pinky on the high third, and I'm working that for your E minor. And then from that E minor, then we'd be going to a C major chord. And then we're kind of repeating that idea, but, but I really kind of feel more of the D slash F sharp the first time through because the bass notes here and then B minor the second time through. But D slash F sharp and B minor randomly are almost interchangeable, I think, through the tune. So if one's easier for you, you may want to just gravitate towards that and just kind of run with it. So if we tried the chorus, we could try any of those strummings we've been doing, kind of G. D slash F sharp. doing the arpeggios the first time through. To our verse idea again. Now one other thing I think about adding to the song though is bass notes. And a lot of times on that first down, of the down, down, up, up, down, up, you can throw in a bass for the chord. So on C you'd have A for the bass, on the D you'd have the D for the bass, unless you're doing the D add four and then you have the A for the bass, unless you're doing the D slash F sharp and then you have low E for the bass. And then on the E minor you have low E for the bass, and on the B minor you have the A for the bass. So it can kind of work down, up, up, down, up, kind of that C, D, with a really slow pace. Or if you're quick enough, you can kind of get in two on each one. You know, it's a little bit closer to the tune that way. Or if you're getting on the 16th, you could add basses to that. And you could work it off a of bass, down, down, up, up, down. down, up, up, down, up, slow pace, then we have kind of that G, 
that arpeggio idea could kind of work around the other chords too. You could take the chords and then break them up with different patterns with the right hand. So instead of strumming the whole chord, you could just kind of break it up and that's called an arpeggio, a broken chord idea. So we could even kind of try it that way just with the other chords, like root position. So you have a G. cool way to kind of mix it up, especially when you hit the bridge, and you may want to experiment with. Different patterns. I'm always adding in the bass note on the first one, because then immediately you go, oh, it's that chord. So that might be a cool way. Or you can even kind of follow that, that times five idea, or even kind of a one, two, three, one, two, three. There, then we'd be going into kind of our outro chorus. We basically just repeat our chorus progression through the rest of the tune. So we got a G. So you can take all these ideas, kind of mix them up all kinds of different ways, or find a way that works for you really well. Or even going back and forth between the different ways that we were talking about. It can be a very, very cool idea too. Kind of mixing it up. And that way it sounds more expressive that way. of how you can swim through Something in the Water by Carrie Underwood. Good luck! Hi, wherever you are in YouTube land, this is Munson Summer with Munson Music Live, Munson Guitar Songs, Munson Covers, and Munson Jam Tracks. Thanking you for watching this video, and I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see lots more like it. I'm always open to your requests. If you have the song that you love, please let me know so I can write it down on the request list so I can add that to it because there are probably other people out there who love that song too and would love to learn how to play it. So thanks so much for all the love that you give me and I hope that you're doing well and, and kind of figuring out how you can talk with the, the instrument. Um, we are a small music shop in the middle of nowhere in South Carolina, and, and you're supporting us by, by watching this channel. Really appreciate all that love. So 
best of luck and, I, I, and let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you in, in particular too. I, you can contact me on Facebook. Um, you can leave a message here in the comments section and I'm, I, I respond to all the comments that, that I get. So best of luck to you wherever you are. Thank you.